Welcome to the Further Light Podcast, presented by Wisconsin Freemasonry, helping you accomplish your Masonic goals through education and more light. And now, I present to you, Brother Chris Ludke. This is Brother Chris Ludke, and today I want to explore critical thinking. I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't, but I'm making a bit of an assumption. You're probably thinking critical thinking is something that we talk a lot about, and you're probably very, very good at it, and you may well be. But critical thinking is something that is desperately lacking. As many of you know, I teach at a college locally, and many of my classes are freshman level classes, students coming out of high school. I will tell you that most of them don't know critical thinking. And before I get into the material, I want to address why. Years ago, we got the idea as a society that testing students as often as possible was necessary. And as of today, the average student will take 147 standardized tests from kindergarten through 12th grade. Many of these taking an entire day to complete, or teachers will set it up so that it takes part of the day, but the other day is a wash because there was a lot of stress going into it. Now, first of all, that's the entire academic year that we've given away to testing. But secondly, and more importantly, is how the tests are laid out. They tend to be multiple choice. Scantron, we can run it through a computer, it grades it, it's fine, and it's an easy way to figure out what the scores are and everything else. They are rarely, if ever, asking important questions. Why or how? They are constantly asking what or when. And the problem is we have a couple of generations of students who have come out and they are incredibly good at memorization. Keep in mind, they're really good at memorization in a world where, well, we don't need it as much. The internet gives us things, the smartphone in our pocket gives us information that we otherwise would have memorized in past generations. What those tests don't do is they don't ask you to think critically. And add to that the fact that we tend to say that imagination is something that isn't important, but imagination in children becomes critical thinking in adults. It is how we make those connections. So let's talk about critical thinking. Critical thinking ultimately is all about being aware of the things happening around you and making well-informed decisions and not basing them on one factor or, in today's world, one talking point. Critical thinking involves keeping in mind all the perspectives. They're possible from as many angles as possible. We often make decisions based on our perceptions, and as people have different perceptions, they perceive situations differently. Critical thinking keeps you from jumping to conclusions based on your own perceptions. Basically, it asks you to look at everyone else's. Consider theirs. Not that you're trying to be specifically empathetic, but rather so that you understand what their point is. And so it becomes very, very important. So what is critical thinking? It helps you make decisions based on facts and figures and not just self-perception. Now, that sounds very familiar. When we dealt with logic and the seven liberal arts, logic and dialectic, this is part of it. In fact, critical thinking lets you validate your argument with logic. It allows for the dialectic. It allows for that discussion and understanding of what else is going on so you can come to a well-informed decision. It's important because you work on evidence. Everyone does. Still, when you are a critical thinker, you tend to identify the relationship between your evidence, facts, and arguments. And it leads you to hopefully make an unbiased decision. So this becomes very, very important. When you analyze a situation from all perspectives, you develop a complete understanding of the situation and the possible solutions and implications. And it's all backed by evidence. So, what is the importance? Why do we need to look at critical thinking? Why do we need to develop it? Well, first of all, as an aside, we live in a world of sound bites and talking points. And those are designed to get you to think in a single way according to whatever uh, 
agenda the person presenting them has. Therefore, you need to be able to look at that, recognize what it is, and go out and look for the opposite view. The ultimate form of critical thinking would be to take a perspective and then basically try to disprove it. If you can't, awesome, you're probably on the right track. If you can, then you've learned a great deal in the process and you're probably going to find yourself on the right track fairly shortly. So you have to constantly be questioning yourself, your ideas, and sometimes your thoughts. So what's the importance? Of course, critical thinking allows us to expand our perspectives. If we only walk around with our own perspective, for whatever reason, then that's the only way we view the world. And we won't actually understand the people with the other perspective. This makes us weaker in an argument because I don't understand where they're coming from and therefore I cannot present evidence that might allow them to see my perspective. You know, if we're constantly fighting for you to see my perspective, then everyone's going to buckle down and assume that their perspective is right. If you get outside of that system then that becomes really important. It's like the mosaic pavement. Once you get outside of the construct that says that there is good and evil and recognize that there really isn't good and evil, it's all nuance of human behavior, then you become much more powerful in your ability to understand the world around you. So, one of the importances of critical thinking is the expansion of perspective. Another is the identification of, human, of hidden fact. So sometimes we are so engrossed in perspectives that we lose out on various facts and evidence. Now, this happens when people simply avoid the evidence. And so oftentimes you have to look for what isn't there, and that's particularly difficult. But it can also allow us to ask questions and look at problems from different angles, which would allow us to identify different facts that may have otherwise been overlooked. It allows us to gain new knowledge. When you listen to people's opinion, you gain extra knowledge, the instructive tongue, and understand the problems. You're using the attentive ear. They're using the instructive tongue. And if you look at people as offering an instructive tongue rather than simply spouting their beliefs, you're going to be more likely to listen to them. The newly gained knowledge can be of help in the current problem or future problems down the line. And there are a number of ways to improve our critical thinking skills. First of all, observation. Observation skills are the most important skills when learning to become a critical thinker. A person who observes their surroundings notices the minute details in a person or situation and listens actively to make a great critical thinker. You're observing not just appearance, but you're observing the word and how it's delivered and what might be the subtext, what might be the message underneath. So how do you improve this? Well, first of all, become a good listener. Listen to people attentively. Don't put the argument together in your head while you're listening to them. In fact, the best way to do it, and going back to the Greek philosophers, this is what we see, is oftentimes to listen to their point and then come back to it later. This could be a break. This could be simply changing the topic and then coming back. But that gives you time to actually think about it while still paying close attention to what they say. Also, we need to focus on emotional intelligence. Now, this sounds touchy-feely, but bear with me. If you can empathize with people in situations, you can become self-aware. So if I can really empathize with where someone is coming from, I better understand their argument and their perspective, which means if I'm making an argument to try and change their mind, it gives me that. If I'm simply trying to understand where they're coming from, that becomes very important. So that ability to empathize, to put yourself in their shoes becomes an important observational skill. We also want to identify situations where our opinion might be biased. And this is not the idea of these necessarily these big unconscious biases that we all go through trainings for. Rather, it's the acceptance that the human mind is always going to be biased. Every author, every person is biased in one way or another. And this isn't always the big things. This isn't race, gender, etc. This could be something much simpler than that. 
It could be that you've never had to consider things from a certain socioeconomic class perspective. And so it changes how you look at things. If you can accept that you may well have biases, then you can start to look for them and correct them when you see them. So what other important skills are there? How about analytical skills? With observation skills, you tend to identify the problem. Once the problem has been identified, it is important to analyze the situation based on the facts and evidence. So how do you improve this? Well, reading more can help because it gives you a greater base of knowledge to understand and work with when you're trying to analyze someone else's thoughts. You can read more and interact with people that have varied opinions and perspectives. By the way, this is one of the key elements of Freemasonry, bringing people together in brotherhood and fellowship who otherwise would not be together to expand our perspectives on the world. It makes you a better man simply being around the other perspective. And I know it's uncomfortable. I know we don't like doing it. But it is the best thing for us. We can also improve analytical skills by working towards being as unbiased as possible. Again, this isn't necessarily something that's going to happen quickly. Other skills we can develop is working on inference skills. So identifying and analyzing the problem is done, but it's also important to draw inference and conclusion from the data. So I've got the data, I've analyzed the data, and so what do I do with it now? And that's inference. And you can see this is following the seven liberal arts, specifically grammar, rhetoric, logic. But once we have the data, we need to draw conclusions. And so we need to improve this skill oftentimes. So have discussions with other people of different age groups, backgrounds, experiences to understand different viewpoints. Have that conversation in Lodge about something that is completely unmasonic so that you can learn other people's perspectives and how they see the world. And it doesn't have to be political or religious. It could be anything. Consider all of the information available. Even the minutest detail available, and by the way, I'm not saying be Sherlock Holmes and notice all things, but keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. And pay attention to what's coming in so that you can conclude rather than jumping to conclusions. So you need to take the information in, identify the information, you need to analyze it, so understand what it means, and then you need to make inferences, which is where I'm coming to conclusions based on that information. What's next? Well, I need to communicate that. Rhetoric, or in this case, communication skills. You are never working alone anywhere, whether it's a company, a school, in a social event. And communication skills are particularly important. It could be to understand a problem, explain solutions, and even to listen to different opinions. How many of you have talked to someone who seems very brilliant, very smart? They have a great idea, but they communicate it so poorly that you really can't understand it. You don't want to be that person. So you need to work on clarifying your communication skills. How do you do that? Well, first of all, develop a respect for people's opinions, even if they are different from what we believe in. Because if you don't respect their opinions, you're going to shut down. You're going to focus on defending yours rather than hearing theirs. Remember, listening is a key element of communication. So actively listening to the person who is speaking. This is dialectic. This is taking in information so that we can synthesize it, analyze it, and draw conclusions from it. And who knows? Maybe you start using that information and your opinion starts to shift and their opinion starts to shift. In a perfect world, that would be the ultimate problem solving, wouldn't it? And mind you, I didn't say it'll come to the middle. We'll have perfect compromise. I just said it'll shift. Always small steps. Communicate your viewpoints by providing reason for the same. Do not force your opinions on other people. There's something that I tell my students on a regular basis, which is you are only allowed the opinion that you can justify. And that sounds harsh, but it's true. Think about it. In the real world, outside of the classroom, 
the first question that someone might ask, if I say, here is my thought, or here's what we should do, hopefully someone's going to ask why. And if I can't answer that, if I don't have good communication skills to answer that, then that's a problem. And I can't say, well, someone said it, and so I just went with it, because no one's going to accept that. So we also have problem solving. The main reason you do everything is to solve a problem and provide the best solution, at least in terms of critical thinking. So after identifying the problem, analyzing it, finding and discussing the solutions, it's time to implement it, problem solving. So how do we improve this? We set achievable goals. We gain complete knowledge of the area and stay up to date with friends. We ask questions to those who are experts. So when we're problem solving, always acknowledge your weaknesses and make sure that you are self-aware of where you sit in a continuum of knowledge. Are you an expert in that area or are you the early beginner? And it's important that you acknowledge where that is. You don't have to openly say it. You don't have to say, oh, I have no idea what this means because that would put you at a disadvantage in many situations. But you have to keep it in mind because it will allow you to maintain that temperance and restraint that can amplify your voice. How often in Lodge have we seen brothers who rarely, if ever, speak, but the one time that they do and they rise up and they ask a question or they bring up an issue, everyone stops and listens. And so keep in mind, when it comes to problem solving, it's about compromise, and that's ultimately oftentimes the goal of critical thinking. So in terms of improving critical thinking, Look for gaps in the information available. Identify where there is something missing. How often have you seen a conversation where it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on point A and no one has addressed the closely related point B? So for example, which lawnmower should we buy? And no one talks about how much they cost. They're only cost talking about deck height or width or whatever you do with a lawnmower. Critical thinkers, are always looking out and looking in between for the information available. They work towards identifying these gaps. They understand the point of having complete information and work towards avoiding being judgmental and drawing conclusions based on incomplete information. And that's something that we see all the time today. We can also improve critical thinking by identifying connections. And this is particularly difficult for many people. So developing and understanding the connections between the opinions and facts will help identify pattern. And it's a great way to improve critical thinking. Every time you come across a situation, look for a pattern. By the way, humans are great at pattern identification. A pattern will help you identify the right path to go on, or at least a good starting point to work with, and perhaps will allow you to make a conclusion quickly, draw a conclusion accurately and quickly. How else to improve? Question yourself. I mean, this is a huge issue today. We don't like questioning ourselves in the 21st century, and yet that's exactly what you have to do. You must always ask questions to yourself and challenge your own perceptions. If you have a specific idea, the first thing you should do is come up with why you believe it, and the second thing you should do before you talk to anyone else is find the exact opposite viewpoint and study it as much as you know your viewpoint. And only then can you really come to an educated conclusion. Because otherwise, I'm just looking at it from one side. My conclusion is completely biased. It's problematic. So you have to get rid of your unconscious biases. One of the ways of doing this is ultimately to question yourself. Of course, to improve in critical thinking, we need to evaluate the information that's provided. And of course, that's where we use logic and we look at and we go, does this make sense? Self-awareness becomes very important as critical thinking has to be self-aware, not only of unconscious bias, but aware of your own values and beliefs, because those are going to create the biases. Those are going to create the patterns, the heuristics, whatever you want to call it, that are the basis on which you make all of your decisions. So be aware of your strengths and weaknesses. Be aware of your perceptions and try to change them 
as necessary. Get good at what's called intellectual plasticity. The ability to view something from multiple perspectives and then pick your perspective. You don't want to go into an argument or go into a situation already knowing. You want to learn first and then choose. Next, work on yourself. This very Masonic idea, the gavel teaches us this, many other things teach us this. Understand times when you become defensive or situations where you are unable to listen attentively. And once you do, find ways to work on those. And by the way, those may be the tools of Freemasonry. So keep that in mind. A certain point within a circle is very useful to keep us within due bounds. Identify how you react to certain kinds of information and opinions and identify why. So if I negatively react when I hear a certain idea or a certain opinion, then I need to ask why so that I understand what's going on and I can best improve myself to look at things equally. In a perfect world, we would be perfectly balanced and we would be able to look at anything from both perspectives and then choose our path. And so that's what you're working towards in critical thinking, keeping in mind that perfection is not a human trait and you'll never get to perfection, but constant improvement is important. We need to develop a deeper understanding of whatever we are working with. If we're arguing lawnmowers, then we need to be have a better understanding of lawnmowers. So focus on how the discussion changes your opinion and actively listen to people when they express their opinions. And notice I said, when it changes your opinion. A discussion should always have the ability to change your opinion. If your opinion is so solid that no amount of evidence can change it, then critical thinking is not your issue because you're not critical thinking. You're simply looking at the world through a very specific frame and that can be dangerous because now you can't look at the world with empathy. You can't look at the world from the perspective of others. A few other ways you can possibly improve would be looking for a mentor, participating in some kind of leadership skill training, making sure that you have an open mindset. That's probably one of the biggest ones. And being a flexible thinker, look at new insights and accept new opinions. Remember how science works, for example. In science, we come up with a hypothesis and we try to prove it. And then if other information comes out that disproves that hypothesis, then we have to change our opinion. So for example, if I believe that Jupiter is a gas giant and then tomorrow the Webb Space Telescope looks at it and discovers it's actually Zeus's head, then I need to immediately change my position and be willing to do so because the evidence suggests something different. Obviously, Jupiter is not Zeus's head, but you get the idea it's a change of opinion. And so this is all very, very important. Critical thinking is an important soft skill that is sorely lacking today. And people talk about critical thinking. I'm a great critical thinker. And oftentimes what they mean is I'm good at proving my point. But you can't be a critical thinker if you don't take into account other points. That's why the Greeks come up with logic, but also the dialectic. The ability to hear the other side of the opinion, look at their side, look at your side, bring them together to be what is your belief, and then being flexible enough to acknowledge that another opinion may come in and shift yours in another direction. That is what it is to be a critical thinker. Critical thinking is a combination of skills that help make informed decisions and also develop stronger teams. Critical thinking is what we used to call imagination in children. So oftentimes it's being able to connect things. If I take two things that appear to be very, very separate in completely different fields and I can put them together, that would be good critical thinking. But it takes a certain amount of creativity to look at two things and go, hey, maybe those are related even though everyone else says they aren't. That imagination is what gives you the idea of compromise or the ability to shape your opinion. Critical thinking is important as it helps you ask questions that make sense and listen to answers you would have not thought of or that you would have never accepted. 
It is quite possible that you truly believe the moon is made of cheese. I'm on astrological or astronomical uh, bent right now, but it could be your belief that the moon is made of cheese. If we prove that it's actually made of Gouda, because that's a Gouda idea, well, then if there's proof, you should move to that. Or if the opinion starts to shift, look at uh, science in general or nutrition science, food science, and how it shifts all the time. What is healthy? What isn't? And people go, well, that's what makes science bad because it's constantly changing. No, that's what makes science critical thinking. That's what makes it good is because it can look at new evidence coming in and shift its opinion accordingly. Nothing is static in the universe. And you can't be static if you're going to become a better man. Critical thinking is a two-way learning process with skills that help achieve the goals of the organization, the person, whatever the circumstance might be. And you have to accept that it's two ways. You have to accept that sometimes you're going to be wrong, and that's a really hard lesson to take in. And yet it's so important. So many things wouldn't exist without it. Edison goes through hundreds of possible filaments for a light bulb. He has to accept on every occasion that he is wrong until he finds the right one. If he doesn't, we would have either never have light bulbs or have light bulbs that burn out in minutes. That wouldn't be useful. So go out and develop your critical thinking. Question your thoughts. Look at other people's perspectives. Analyze their ideas. Look at them, understand them so that you can start to draw educated conclusions and be willing to change your mind as new evidence appears. Thank you for joining me, Brother Chris Lidke, and the entire Further Light team on your quest to find more light through masonry. Are you interested in learning more about Freemasonry in Wisconsin? Visit wisconsinmasons.org to learn more about masonry and access further educational content and more light. Once again, that address is wimasons.org. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, please email us at education at wisconsinmasons.org. And thank you for listening.